Hi everyone! I wanted to start by showing you what I did with the pieces that I found in the attic. So starting on the top of the cabinet, there are some paintings that my mom did. These are hawks, I believe. And this is a painting of a creek at Yellow Springs. And then we have Tristan and Roman when they were little. I found these pumpkins in the attic also. So my goal was to use what I found and not have to purchase anything. So this we're gonna use our imaginations. That's gonna be Penny Pumpkin when I finish it. And then there's Tristan's senior picture. These are the, uh, this is the blue velvet pumpkin that had the plastic top and so I also had these in the attic and I went ahead and did I wrapped them and then I used some of the moss and the wool to make little leaves and I just tried to keep the colors I put the all the pumpkins out first and then try to use colors of wool to draw in the other colors that it was around and Sarah from So Me Sarah had suggested the garden twine. So I did have some of that in my finishing items. So that's all on the top. And then moving down here, this blackbird I just finished, I'll pull it out and show it up close, but there's some more velvet and kind of like fake wool pumpkins there. And then I left the shepherd's bush pillow out because I love it so much. And these pottery pieces are always in these cabinets. So I left them. My parents purchased these in the 70s when they were at school at Cleveland Institute of Art. And I love them so much. I mean, they have some little chips and things now, but they were always out at our house growing up. This is a rock, I think from Moab. I usually have a lot of rocks displayed in here and then this dish is part of the ceramic collection for my parents and these I had gotten a couple years ago at the thrift store they're like little um, stained glass leaves and I cut these off of picks that I found in the attic and then there's a giant pumpkin down there I haven't really done anything with that and there's a little acorn there's another part of the ceramic collection. I didn't do the stem. This is what the stems looked like before I wrapped them. So I still have some more to do on those. This was part of a pick, and that's what I cut the pumpkins off of. And then in the middle here, there's the Priscilla and Chelsea little fox charts, and then these I also found up there. Um, this is another pottery piece that's part of the group. It's actually a large soup tureen, and I wish I still, over the years, the, um, the like sp spoon thing had broken, but that I would actually love to use because I make soup all the time. Um, this, oh, this is a bracelet I had made in college copper bracelet but this normally sits out this was from Goodwill I think this was like 50 cents I just thought it was cool and there's a random piece in there from the rock shop but I was just using it to give this guy some height this was one that I got at the antique store that I used as an example to do the pumpkins and down here we have a painting that my dad did and then I did cut apart the Who's There Satsuma Street uh, piece that I had showed in the last video and just finished that. I'll pull it off and show you up close. And then there's another Priscilla and Chelsea with another one of the um, antique store pumpkins and then another, this is always out too, this, this is all part of the same group. 
And then up here, there's some more pumpkins. I wanna do something better with this. This is really cool. I found this at the antique store when I was going a lot when my husband was in physical therapy and it's this neat acorn, but it's not really, it doesn't really show up here right now. So, sorry, I'm kneeling on the floor. I have to get up. This is, so this is that cabinet right now. And then hopefully pretty soon we'll have Penny Pumpkin up there too. Hi everyone. I hope you enjoyed my attempt at autumn decorating. After I pulled everything out of the attic and I was so excited to get some use out of those things that were put away, um, I put everything out and then I realized that I did not have any stitching to go with it, except for those few things that I had shown you in the last video. So I did end up doing the pumpkins. These had the plastic stem, and then I used that scrap wool bag that I got from Etsy to put little leaves on them, and then I used this Spanish moss because I'm determined to use this stuff all up. Um, so I arranged everything and I thought, oh, this is terrible. There's no, there's no stitching. I had those two fall pieces. So I have Penny Pumpkin that I'm working on, which I'll show you in a moment, that I'm super excited to have done so that I can put in, in the display. But I thought, oh, I really, now, now everyone's got me so excited about decorating for fall, which I was never interested in before. Um, I needed something to stitch and I thought, oh, I, I can't, I can't look at every single fall chart and then try to decide what to do and stitch it. And so I thought, well, probably the best value and the best bet as far as having things that I would love is to just go ahead and get the Winds of Autumn book that everyone loves so much. So I thought the definitely be something in there that I can use and even if it's just parts of charts and I could make smalls from them just to have something up this year so I ended up doing and I apologize I'm using my phone today Roman needs his camera selfish no I'm just kidding um, so I found Waiting for the Harvest, which I love. So yeah, that's why I don't know where to look. I think I'm supposed to be looking this direction, but it's a, I'm a little confused. And I love the colors. If I had this thread, I would have just done it in this thread, but I didn't. And I wanted to get things done to put into the little display there. So I had a tiny scrap of weeks Confederate gray left over from the apple orchard chart that I did from Blackbird. And I had just enough to actually stitch it. I didn't even have enough to make it into a pillow. Um, and I just used colors that I had. I had, let's see, this was Carolina Cecil is the majority of the orange. I had used that for a piece that I did for Tristan for graduation. And then this is brass from Almond M&M's. It's a silk. And then this is 924. And that I just had on my tray from working on modern folk embroidery. And I that's my favorite color. So I thought I would just use that. I did the J. Uh, they have initials charted on either side. I did buttons on one side and then my initial on the other. And I knew I was going to run out of the Carolina Cecil. So what I did was I made sure I had like the outline of this pumpkin done and as much as I could. And then I had to use clockwork for the rest of it and it wasn't terrible i mean in the actually in the video it looks like 
a lot more similar, but when it was done, it was just really, really bright and your eye went right to that particular spot. So I just used some coffee on a Q-tip to try to tone it down a little bit, which I think worked. And then the chenille, this was that Snow Lady Dots chenille that I had gotten that's more of a bright white. So I just dunk that in coffee and I really like how it, it almost ended up the same color as the linen. This was, I believe, 30 count. So it's two over two. And then I just pulled for my little button jar. And then the back, this is a piece of the fabric that I used to make my mom's pouch from. And I, my intention was to make it into a pillow, but I had such a tiny, tiny margin that I barely had enough to pin it. And I was afraid if I made it into a pillow that I would lose the, uh, too much of the, the actual stitched part. And I like to have a little bit of an extra margin so that you can really see the whole thing, even when it's a pillow. So I was really happy with that, how that came out. I just, I couldn't stitch fast enough to try to get things into that um, autumn display once I had it all set up. So I did that and I'm glad, I'm, I am really glad that I purchased the book because I think for the price of the book, and I believe there's 12 projects in the book, it really is a great value. And the couple charts that I'm, probably wouldn't stitch. There's definitely elements in it that I would use. So I did that. And then I had, when we were talking about the gifts, I had shown the Who's There Setsuma Street birds. And I thought, you know what? Or owls, who's there? The owls were so cute and I didn't want to just leave it in a box forever. So I just finished off the part of the tree trunk. And then I added some wool leaves and I added a wool moon. And then I just did a back stitch all the way around and frayed the edges and put it on a piece of blue wool. Sorry, this was all from the wool scrap bag, same wool scrap bag that I got on Etsy months ago. Um, but this larger piece is what I used to line that project box with. Um, I would like to find a little maybe ceramic star or something to hang here from the moon. But I thought, you know what, let me just get it finished and up and I'll worry about that later. So that was just kind of a trying to salvage what I had done since I knew I wasn't going to finish it. And then uh, Penny Pumpkin is really the one I want to get done so badly too. Uh, I've been working on it a lot, but I still have, I did not iron it. I do feel like a lot of people do where I'm concerned if I iron something for every single video, um, I'm just going to be smushing the stitches. So this is the Scarlet House. And this is the one that Marilyn had so kindly sent me. And Sharon is also stitching this. The three of us are stitching this. And I absolutely love it. And I realized, you know, it's an autumn piece. It's not Halloween. So I still can finish this. So it's still rolled up. You can see, I usually, when I'm stitching in hand, I have this rolled up and then I'm stitching like this with my left hand. So it looks just like it did when I was working on it last night. So I am getting there. I just, the border, which is one of my favorite parts of the chart, I have a long ways to go and I have, I think one more of these to do and then the rest are one over one, which are fine. They're 10 stitches, one over one. So I did change, I just used colors that I had 
And on the pumpkin, I did grits, but then I used a little bit of, these are the colors that I'm using. Grits is most of the pumpkin, but I used a tiny bit of Weeks beige in certain areas just to give it a little bit more depth. And this is one over one on 36 count fox and rabbit eucalyptus. So I can't wait to get this done. And then that's going to go in the gold frame that was sitting on the top of the cabinet. So I'm going to keep working on that. And those were the majority of what I got done in the past few weeks. I'm a few days late filming this. We had a lot of fun things going on, all good stuff. But um, what I spent a lot of time on, and I apologize, you're probably sick of seeing this, but if I don't show it to you, um, I won't be accountable to keep working on it, I feel. So still working on my modern folk embroidery and sorry, Kitty's crying because she wants to get on the chair and she can't get on the chair unless someone picks her up. So I was working on August and September and I had shown you the pagoda last time. I got, this is all done now. I have the R in there for Roman, but I still have all of this to do. And I had it done, like, I had it done up to this point the day before the month of, I think, yeah, the day before September ended. And I think I just completely burnt myself out. There was so much, sorry, now Kitty is scratching on the chair because no one will put her on the chair because I'm the only one home. And she's always good until I go to make a video and then she's super noisy. Um, so I still have to do all this. I think I just got, I got a little burnout and I had set up the, the fall decorations and then I felt so compelled to do some fall stitching that I had to stop what I was doing and work on that. So that is everything that I actually stitched in the past few weeks and i am going to do some shorter segments and kind of put them together and I, next i'm going to show you what's going on here behind me because it's different than the painting that used to be there i wanted to show you this wall in the dining room also in previous videos you may have noticed a large painting behind me and a lot of the artwork in our house is not really ours, it's pieces. I have pieces for my mom, my dad, my brother. And so a lot of times they're hanging on the wall, but then they have to go to galleries. So we lost the two big paintings and I needed to do something on the empty walls. And so I put up, this is the la -di da piece on earth chart that I did on the mirror. And also because I took things from that cabinet and it will be fall and then Christmas decorations, some of the things needed to move anyway for a while. So up here is the Blackbird finish that I showed in the last video. And then this is a portrait that my mom did of me. I think I was probably four or so. Um, sorry, the lights in the background. Roman thinks that it's super creepy to have a picture of me hanging up, but this, well, I love it because my mom did it and it was always hanging in our house and she had chosen this photograph um, because it was the end of taking pictures and I wasn't smiling and so she thought that that just made it more interesting. So. Sorry about the glare again. It's dark in here this morning. But that was me when I was little. So I put it up even though Roman thinks it's creepy. And like I said, the, everything changes as, as the rotation of artwork. We're very lucky to have a lot of artwork to put up. Um, and then this was in the cabinet. This was the modern folk embroidery chart. 
So I took one of these, I didn't fill it yet, but one of these printers trays and I just use command strips to put that piece on so I can take it off. And then I'm just gonna put some, like this is a little piece of Laramar. It's a little, actually that was a magnet from Moab. There's some thimbles that were my Nana's. I could do a little stitched piece in there. Um, so that I will fill up. And then this is a beautiful painting from my stitchy friend Rebecca that I will tell you more about, but I wanted to put that in a frame and hang it up to remind me of her kindness. It's really beautiful. Um, it doesn't show in the, the video very well, but there's actually kind of a gold metallic wash to the watercolor. It's really gorgeous. So this is what I did to fill that empty wall that we had after the large painting left. I wanted to share some stitchy kindness that I've received over the past few weeks, and I don't even have words. I No one has to send me anything, and it's so overwhelming and just unbelievable to me, and I can't thank you enough, and I just wanted to show um, some of the things that I've received. Um, Linda had sent me this beautiful thank you card and I actually want to make, I just made my first junk journal as a gift for someone and I want to make one for myself so I can put um, pieces of the cards in to save because they mean so much that someone would take the time to send me a card. Um, and Linda actually lives, her local LNS is Shepherd's Bush. <laughs> so jealous but really happy for you Linda um, so the next time when you were in Utah we're hopefully gonna be able to meet up at the store that would be absolutely amazing so and also Linda I just got your card and I thought I would share it with you on here in case anyone else needs to know um, regarding the floss tags or floss drops um, I, she had asked what company I used. I used Vistaprint and I've used them for at least 10 years for all different kinds of things and have always been really happy with them. The cards that I made for the, the floss drops, I used the regular business card option in the vertical orientation. I did use the, I always pick the premium um, paper option. It's kind of the middle of the road option that they have. And for the floss drops or tags, I did choose the rounded corner option. It did not change the price that much. And I just liked the rounded corner look for those. Um, and the only thing I would say, I mean, it's super easy to use. I was actually helping my dad um, use it yesterday. The, um, when you do the back and you do writing on the back, if you try to put it more towards the middle and then that way when you punch, you won't punch into your writing or the same thing with the image. I tried to find an image where if I lost some of the top and bottom, it would still look like the lake that I had taken the picture of. So Vistaprint, um, the only issue I've ever had with them in all the years I've used them was I got a box of cards that kind of had like a ghost image on the back where the writing was and I just sent them an email and a picture and explained that I had not gone through all 1,000 cards but I noticed that you know the ones I had used so far a few of them had an issue and they immediately sent me a new a brand new box like just sent it out I think the next day. So I've always been really, really pleased with them. So thank you so much, Linda. And I'm excited to, I mean, none of us really need an excuse to go to Utah, but we'll definitely have to make that happen so that we can meet up and go to Shepherd's Bush together. So, and then Alice, my sweet friend, Alice, she sent me this beautiful card. This is why I've never gotten so many pretty cards ever. So I need to, I want to make something to keep them in. But 
I really have fallen in love with La Di Da and I had mentioned last time that I had been looking um, more at her work trying to find charts for other people and I had come across this pattern and had it on my my wish list that has the elephants I just think it's so beautiful and Alice had reached out to me and asked if I would like to stitch it and I said yes absolutely so I thank you Alice so much I love it I can't wait to get started um, and then my sweet friend Lisa she sent me this adorable card it's got the little sparkle on it and she had made me a card that I could use to send to someone and because I just started um, trying my hand at the junk journal, I really appreciate the handmade paper uh, projects. It really takes a lot more time than I had realized. And then she sent me one that I can try to make myself. So I'm really excited to try it. It's really nice because everything's already in there and cut, so I don't have to debate about it too much and what I'm gonna do. So. And then she had asked if I would be interested in stitching Winter Rose Manor. And I said, absolutely I would. I have never owned a Brenda Gervais chart. And so I was really excited. I think she had said she had two copies um, and that I could use it for myself for a giveaway, but I'm going to selfishly keep it for myself because it's so beautiful. And I also really um, appreciate how easy the chart is to read. And I also think that sometimes, um, I know when it came out and every, you know, everyone was doing it, I enjoyed watching everyone's progress so much, but I think that when I'm doing something along with everyone, what is it that they say that comparison is the thief of joy? Is that right? Something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, you know what I'm saying, but you know, and then it's like, you look at other people's and think, Oh, they're so much farther along or, Oh, their stitches are more perfect. Or so I think that sometimes it's, well, one, you just, should, you just shouldn't compare yourself to other people, but that's easier said than done. So that I think I will enjoy very much doing, um, Maybe next year. I think I've already started thinking about next year. I love watching planning videos. I love Dina um, from Half Stitch Cross Stitch. Uh, I love hearing her talk about her plans. I find it so relaxing. So I've been thinking about next year and what I want to do. So now I have those two. And then Slightly Bananas, who you may remember from she did the beautiful sweet simple things project with the vintage lapel pin i got a package in the mail and i could not figure out what it was because i never knew rebecca's name even though i had sent her something i had addressed it to slightly bananas <laughs> and they probably laughed at the post office but it's okay they know me so they have other things to laugh about too but so i got this package and i really i had i had no idea what it was and it was beautifully the presentation was so gorgeous and the card was a painting that rebecca had done so from the video that i showed you or the little clip i took it off the wall so i could show you better but she painted this and you don't get to fully appreciate the depth of it in the camera, but again, it has that kind of metallic wash over it and it's so beautiful. I put it in this frame. We had these frames here at the house and it was basically the perfect, I mean, it, the opening was the perfect size. I did lose a little bit. You can see Rebecca's signature there, but I mean, that was just the card. I, like I was so overwhelmed and felt so undeserving. I was sweating when I was opening this package. So she made me these earrings that are absolutely beautiful. I'll try to... 
and I love how elongated they are. And she used blue and pearls, which are my favorite. And then I'm going to take it off so you can see. And I realized that I had it flipped. I always end up with my necklace flipped when I'm making a video. She stitched the squirrel and it's not showing up. I don't have the good camera today, so it's not showing up as well, like all the little details. It's one over one. It's perfectly stitched, the little squirrel. And again, the light is so bad and I don't have the camera, but there's little tiny beads on the acorn. And then she's got the pearls. And the most, I mean, if that's not thoughtful enough, she combined the colors that I'm using in the Modern Folk Embroidery 2021 style and the colors that she's using. And it's the most beautiful. I, I just can't get over it. I, the, there, I'll make sure, okay, there, now it's on going the right direction. I just didn't even know what to do. I, and then if that weren't enough, she made this beautiful little, or like travel or container. And I had told her I'd always, I don't have one and I've always wanted one like this, you know, where you can fold it down and it's tiny. And then everything was wrapped in this beautiful autumn fabric with the pumpkins. So I saved all that because there's definitely, you could, you know, um, all of the, the pieces was wrapped in that fabric, so you could use it for something. It's just, I don't even have words. So thank you so much, Rebecca. It, I mean, it meant so much. Like I said, I was so emotional. I couldn't believe that anybody would would do all that, and it was so kind. Um, and so I just, all of it, I, I can't get over. And everyone watching and commenting and everyone having the nicest things to say and not minding that I share stories about the boys and it's just, I'm just eternally grateful. In other stitchy kindness, stitchy friend news, I have a real life friend to stitch with and her name is Eileen and I am just beyond excited. Um, as much as we do as a family, I don't really do that much socially anymore it seems in the past year and a half. And it's like the universe just provided me with the most amazing friend. And we actually kind of knew each other in a way. It was such a funny story. I had shipped an Etsy order to an address that was local to me. And I thought that name sounds so familiar. And so of course I went straight to Instagram and thought, oh, this has to be my friend's mom. It has to be. Um, so it turns out that Eileen, I, so I sent her a message on Instagram thinking she's either going to think I'm a complete weirdo and I'm totally off, or this is my friend's mom. And so although her daughter and I worked together and were friends and, and she was at my wedding and I just never met Eileen because she was also working at the time and she invited me over and I just can't, I know probably most of you have people that you get to see and stitch with, but I've never had that. And Eileen is so incredibly kind and not only has the most beautiful home that I've ever seen in my life, she has so many stitched pieces. It was as inspiring as going to a store to see all of the models. Um, things that people are stitching now as stitch alongs that I just thought were, you know, recently out, um, like his eye on the sparrow, for example, you know, it's, done hanging in her dining room, beautiful as can be. Um, I don't want to, I didn't discuss with Eileen what I, what I should share on, on plus two, but all I'm going to say is you need to look at her Instagram because I can, I feel like I can say that because she, she, you know, she posted those pictures, 
But if you want to see an entire wall of Blackbird design finished pieces and the most amazing stitching spot and just the most beautiful pieces, even Roman could not get over, um, it was the Red Deer sampler I was showing Roman my new stitchy friend. Um, it's just the most beautiful projects. GGR, um, it's just gorgeous. Just an entire house filled, filled with the most beautiful projects. And she's the kindest, most generous, just amazing person with a home that, you know, I would dream to have my children you know, her, her grown children all want to be there and her grandchildren and she has an amazing husband and just the way that I would hope that someday, you know, my life will be with my children. And so she was so generous to have me over. She sent me home with so many, so many goodies. I don't, like I said, I didn't discuss with Eileen what was appropriate to share, but um, I will say that she has a good start on Dutch Beauties. And since my younger brother Brent is also working on that, I am definitely now starting. So I ordered my supplies yesterday and we have plans to stitch together um, next week. So I just, I can't even tell you how excited I am and not only stitching, but Eileen showed me, because I've kind of gone down the English paper piecing rabbit hole, just watching videos, not committed, like not purchasing anything for it yet. But she was, I was looking at her projects and she insisted that I take the hexes to try and she showed me how to do Quilter's Knot, and I started, I have this Liberty London uh, little, I don't even know if they're fat quarters, I don't even think they're fat quarters, but that a friend had gotten for me, and I keep using little bits of them, but I started making little hexies too, so <laughs> I just, I, I just can't get over it, it's like a dream come true, I mean, I just can't even say enough about Eileen, I just adore her, so she doesn't know it yet, but I'm probably going to teach the boys how to cook, and my husband, and then I'm just going to show up at her doorstep with my suitcase packed, and stay at her house, because I feel like I could get a lot more stitching done if I just stayed at her house, so it was so lovely, it was just, it was probably the best day that I've had for myself, personally, in the past year and a half, so, and my my whole family was so excited for me that I had a real life stitchy friend. Um, so it was really nice. So thank you, Eileen. I really appreciate it. And in preparation for being able to travel and see other people and stitch, I wanted to show you, I, it may be hard, I, I know this sounds really strange, but I, I really have like, I have a book bag for camping and traveling that I use as my carry-on. And I have one handbag, like a small handbag. And I really, I have like totes that I use for the grocery store, but I really don't, I thought, oh my gosh, I actually get to leave the house. Um, I'm gonna need some kind of, you know, something to carry my stuff around when I go see my friend, Eileen. So I ordered, it just came yesterday, I'm really excited about it. I ordered this bag, I found it on Etsy, and it's a waxed canvas, and it's Heidi West. She actually, this is screen, like she makes this fabric and then makes the bags, but it has this, like the wired top, so it sits open, and I was, I, you know, I looked at the measurements and I triple checked everything. I was concerned that because it's open and then it closes like that with the zipper that it might be too short, but it's actually perfect. There's tons of pockets inside um, and like places for pens. There's pockets on the two, um, both sides of the bag. So if, if you're looking for something 
I mean, I've never been to a retreat, but like something to travel with. This seems, I mean, there's one, two, three, four. There's like six pockets in the inside plus places for pens. I, I believe it was more of a like knitting bag, which was why I was concerned it would be tall enough for charts, but it's perfect. And then I wanted to get something for Eileen for having me over. So I had found, there is, um, on Etsy, a shop called Allegro Stitches. And I ordered a bag for Eileen and I know I don't normally buy the vinyl project bags, but these were so pretty. Um, I ordered one for Eileen as a thank you. And then I ordered one for myself thinking like, oh, I have somewhere to go. I might need, you know, a little bag, but I liked, um, it's Amy. I'm almost positive it's Amy. I will double check and put it up. I feel terrible. I'm sorry, Amy, because she has a floss tube channel as well, which I want to, I want to talk about also, but they're really beautifully made, but they're smaller. Um, I have, actually, I have my cutting mat right here. I'll measure. These are 10 by about eight. So for a small chart, I just think it's just the right size. And I like that the primary fabric or what I would, you know, like this is what I, the reason I chose this bag is on the outside because you can see it. And then the inside fabric is like the secondary fabric because that's covered up by the project anyway. And then she has the little, um, floss keep things. So I found that like this fits perfectly in here if I don't want to keep it in the bag. Um, so that, although I don't typically buy the vinyl ones for myself because those smaller projects are short term and I actually have some place to go now, I did, I did get one for myself. Um, but Amy's floss tube, which is also called Allegro Stitches, I just finished watching all of them. And she does something that I think is super, super interesting. And I really want to try. I have not tried it yet. And I don't think I could commit to what she did. She did a 100-day challenge where she did ATC cards. And those are artist trading cards, which I've seen done like in the art world. They're usually uh, two and a half by three and a half cards that you, like a painter would, you know, make the little card and then you would trade it. So she did it with um, a small stitched piece that had to fit in that two and a half by three and a half inch parameter. And then she um, stitch like put, a batting and then like a card stock or a paper on the back and then you can actually stamp it with a generic like you know ATC trading card stamp where you can put like your name and the date and everything and I thought that's such a cool idea now what she did was she did it for a hundred days and she actually did it like just the one that pops in my head they had purchased a canoe. And so she had found a little free chart of a canoe. And on the day that they did that as a family, that was the little card that she stitched that day, which I started looking. I think it's, um, I wrote it down. It's about, I think 30 by 40 stitch count to have it. I mean, obviously it depends on the size of your fabric, but that would be on 14 count or 28 counts, or, you know, you could do something larger one over one, but it's actually really hard. It's much harder than I thought to find something small that fits, you know, within that parameters, unless you want to do more stitching and do it one over one. But I just thought it was such a cool idea. So it's Allegro stitches on floss tube and on 
I believe Instagram and then she also has her personal account and then she has her Etsy store. Oh, and she probably, this is probably one of those things where if you live there, it's like super annoying that people think it's so cool, but she lives in North Pole, Alaska, which is, is fascinating to me. So that's where the bags came from. And I just, I'm very fascinated by that AT, ATC trading card idea. Um, so if I do end up getting into that, I, I definitely could not commit to a hundred days of it, but I do kind of want to try that idea of fitting, like finding things that fit into that size parameter. Um, and it also makes you go through, like my sister-in-law at one point had got me a lot of books from the thrift store, like older cross-stitch books, and they were also up in the attic. And you know, they're, they're, I don't want to say dated. I mean, they're, they're from like, you know, maybe the nineties or eighties, but there's so many good little motifs in those books. And I think that's what I found really interesting from watching Amy's videos. She had a lot of free charts or sources for free charts that I wasn't familiar with, but then also just the fact that she could pick these beautiful little motifs from something that you might overlook and then use them in one of these little daily small projects. So I thought that was really cool. So I did purchase a few things in the past couple of weeks. One was the Heidi West bag from Etsy that I showed you and the um, project bags from Allegra Stitches. And then there is a chart that I've been debating about for probably at least a year. And I was watching Chris Cross Stitch and he started his first Mirabilia. And he had mentioned that he and Vanessa from Seams Stitchy were doing like a first Mirabilia stitch along. And I, I have wanted to do this for so long and I just think she's so beautiful. And I think my hesitation was one, it wasn't like most of the things I stitch, I know my boys, they, they are like already, you know, call it and who gets what. I don't know that anyone would want this one, but I, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. So the one that I'm talking about is at the Met. And I love her because I love all the jewels and my favorite colors are black and blue. And then I love the pop of red, but you know, it's a big, it's a big time investment. It's a, it's a big investment. I think a lot of times what I do is I go into one, two, three stitch when there's a chart that I like. And because they give you that option of like, add all the things that you need to the cart type of thing, it kind of puts in perspective, like, okay, it's not just buying the chart, but like, this is the actual true cost of what it's going to be to do this project. So I had not purchased it. And then when Vanessa and, Stit and uh, Chris were doing their first Mirabilia, Mirabilia, I thought, okay, fine. This is like, this is just a little bit of a nudge that I need. Um, and also I wanted to mention, if you haven't watched Vanessa from Seam Stitchy, you absolutely need to. You need to like watch her first video so that you really get to meet her. She is an incredible woman and she is so positive and not only that i mean her stitching she'll hold she'll say like oh I, I worked on this for a day i just started it and then she holds it up and she's like half done and it's just unbelievable but she was also a model stitcher so i'm assuming that teaches you how to stitch really fast but she i mean she's really incredible but definitely watch her first video um and i just i think she's really really lovely so because I like Chris so much and I like Vanessa so much, I thought, okay, fine, I'll get the chart. So what I did was, um, it is now sold out on 123 Stitch, but at the time it was still available. But I looked on Etsy because I thought, well, maybe somebody, well, I thought, let me just look on Etsy first. And then I realized that there were people that sell them as um, like part partly kitted. So I found, 
Um, oh, I put it on the back of here so I wouldn't forget. It's called Sycamore Studio on Etsy. I just cut it off the receipt. But they were offering the charts, basically everything except the DMC. And when I, and it was free shipping. So I'm not great at math, but from what I could figure, like when I put the chart and the fabric in the cart at one, two, three stitch, the option from Etsy was only $10 more, but it had the chart, the fabric, and everything but the DMC. So I already showed you the chart. Um, it comes with the called for linen, which I've never used Witchel, but I do stitch in hand. I know people say it's really stiff, but if you stitch in hand, that's kind of a good thing. It came with all of the Mill Hill beads. And it's so funny, when I was a little girl and we would go to the needle workshop, my mom would always let me get these beads to just make stuff with. I just like to, you know, I just make stuff. And like looking back, I'm like, wow, that was really generous to let me just pick out all these beads. I didn't realize that they were for stitching. Didn't occur to me, even though they were at the stitching shop. And then it came with all the Karen Water Lilies silks, which are beautiful. And then I just went to Joanne and got, oh, it came with the Krynik too, which I think I left in the other room, which is gold Krynik. And then I went to Joanne, got the DMC, and then the rest of the DMC is just like five skeins of 310. So I also don't know when I'm actually going to start that. Um, it may not be till next year, but I'm just so happy to have her. I just, again, I don't, I don't even know what I'm going to do with it. I just want to put all those beads on and see it all come together. So I got that. And then the only other thing that I got, which um, Stacy 911 Stitcher on Floss Tube and Instagram, she is so generous with her time and finding new, new releases and new artists to share. And a few well months ago now, she had shared a designer called Cliffside Stitches. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is just totally up my alley. It's, you know, all, it's more of, um, like designs from different cultures. And I always felt like, oh, I can't choose. I just can't choose. And then I, you know, I favorited the shop, always favorite the shop if it's somebody that you like, because then you get the notifications when they post something, a new item. And then I realized I, could never decide because the one that I really wanted didn't exist yet. And it's called, it's Armenian Sampler. So I think sometimes maybe when you can't decide, it's because it's just the right one isn't, like it's the right designer, but just wasn't the right chart yet. So I, if you've seen my previous videos, you know, I'm still working on the other Armenian piece that I'm doing for Tristan. So no, I have not finished this one before I got that one. This is from Evlia. And this is Armenian Rand's form. It doesn't, it's the same either way, but I love it. I don't really have as much car stitching time now because now that Roman's 16, I feel like he's old enough. Well, one, either like he has friends that drive him places or instead of sitting in the car all day, I'm more comfortable like dropping him off and then just going back to get him. So that one was always like my, in my car and I just really haven't been, I just need to get it out and work on it. But this will be another one. I will put it with my Evlia pieces and then someday I'll give it to Tristan, but I just, I'm obsessed with the colors. It's on black. I am going to use black Ada. I have no pro I mean, I love stitching on anything and I think it just makes the most sense to do it on black Ada because there is a little bit of black that shows through on the chart, but it's mostly um, the colors. I pulled, she did a like a light color fabric colorway and a dark color. I just pulled both colorways. There's not that many, it's, it's 
five colors. It's only five colors. Um, but I just think it's absolutely beautiful and I'm so excited to start this one too. So it's not really that big. It looks bigger and the, the printout, you know, it just never does it justice. Um, if you do it on 14 count, it's only 10 and a half by 10 and a half. So I don't know. I don't think this will be, I think this will be a relaxing one. Black 14 count Ada doesn't bother me too much um, to work on. So those are my, my treasures that I found in the past few weeks, along with um, everything that I needed to do for Dutch Beauty, which will hopefully arrive this week. So we'll see. So we have giveaway winners from last video, and then I have some things for this video as well. So the first thing that we were giving away is the Something Wicked from La Dida. And that one goes to Carol Turner. So congratulations, Carol. And if you will just email me um, with your shipping information, I will get this out to you right away. And then we also had the Pearl Needle Minder that I would like to add to the shop. I just want to get some feedback first. So, sorry, it's not. And this is for Karen Evans. So congratulations, Karen, and just email me your shipping info and I'll send that to you. I just think it's super fun to send things out. So um, I have some other charts that I had purchased to do gifts. Well, one, the first one, this I had purchased with the intention of making it for someone, which I'm not going to. So this is Tea is for Turkey by Heartstring Samplery. And this is unopened. There's a little bit like of marks on the bag. Something must have been poking it, you can see. But if you would, if you're interested in stitching this, it's 80 by 80. It's really cute. Um, just use the word turkey in your comments and then we'll do a random comment picker for that. And then I, at one, I was trying to decide a like monthly series to do, which I'll talk about in my plans. But one of the ones I had considered was the Country Cottage Needleworks series. And I purchased November. It was that time of year when I was debating but I have since started the um, Corsetta Gogo one with this as a sow with Sarah from So Me Sarah. So this one is going to be a giveaway along with, I ordered another little floss keep with the snap from Allegro Stitches as a giveaway. So this will go together. And for this one, let's use the word thankful because there's it's it says thankful in the fabric there it's really cute it's a really nice snap too it's very sturdy so the little fat um floss keep thing with the november chart will be the second giveaway and just use the word thankful so those are the giveaways and then as far as plans i Definitely want to finish Penny Pumpkin as soon as possible. I want to finish the Modern Folk Embroidery that I say every time and get caught up, just like I say every single time. And I want to start that Armenian Sampler. I want to start Dutch Beauty when everything gets here. I want to do the Corsetta Go Go. Uh, March is the one for the month of October. That we're doing that one's super cute too i didn't bring the paper over but it has the frog on it so i'm excited about that um i want to start some other new things with my friend eileen and yeah i want to make plans for i want to look at all the things that i have and make plans for 2022 um if anybody has thoughts on whipco let me know. That's another thing that I'm debating about. I'm debating about whether I should just look at everything and assign it a month or whether I would do better having Whipco. I am, 
I mean, I do stitch on what I want to stitch on, but I'm also fairly goal oriented. So I wonder if that would just help me do, you know, pull something out that I'm not currently feeling inspired by and make me love it again. So if anybody has really strong feelings about whip go, let me know. Cause I've never done it before. And the only other thing that I have to share is not stitching related. Um, it's about the boys. So if you want to head out, I completely understand. If not, I'll tell you a little bit about what the boys are up to. So, um, Tristan did get a full-time job at, oh my gosh, the name is escaping me, Steamboat Springs in Colorado. And so I'm so happy for him that I think I'm forgetting that that means he's going to be leaving in a few weeks. So it's really exciting though. It's really exciting. I said, when are you going to come home? He said, I don't know when the snow melts. So right now, the only thing he's waving, waiting on, he has the full-time job, is he just has to wait for the, um, that he definitely got the housing because they have, I think they call it the pond, like they have housing for employees there. Um, and if not, I'm going to just need to find a stitchy friend that lives close to Steamboat Springs and see if they'll rent him a room for the, for the season. <laughs> so... Um, and then the other thing I wanted to mention, I'm going to put a link to a video that Roman made for Burke's trail works. Um, I had to drive him to a meeting. He's part of like the, he's like their media person now. And I do a lot of hiking. My husband and I like to hike a lot. And after attending this meeting where they go over like, you know, it's a nonprofit and, you know, they went over like you normally would, like, you know, the state of like the treasurer went over the, the financials and they talked about what projects they're working on. And I just always assumed that if you have like a public park um, or we have French Creek State Park here, we have Blue Marsh, we have Birdsboro Preserve. I just always assumed that, you know, if like a tree falls down or something, that somebody comes and takes care of it so you can continue to hike um walk your dog on the trails ride your horse on the trail ride your bike on the trails and i just thought that people like burke's trail works were doing it for the mountain biking aspect of it and like building mountain bike features well as it turns out they're actually the ones that are maintaining the trails so although there's somebody at the location that maybe coordinates volunteers. It's primarily, at least where we live, it's all done by volunteers. So trimming back the overgrowth so that you have a place to walk or, um, you know, removing huge fallen trees after a storm so that you can, you know, can ride your horse um, or walk your dog, things like that. That's all actually done by volunteers. And a lot of it's done by mountain biking groups because you can step over things when you're hiking, but you can't on a bike. So they're usually the most motivated, but I didn't realize that like the money that they fundraise to pay for um, gas and chainsaws and you know all the tools and equipment, and then they have like dig days, like that's really, all this time that's been benefiting me as a hiker. So um, I'm gonna put a link to a video that he made for them, like I mentioned. But if you are somebody that hikes or uses trails to like walk your dog or ride your horse, you, you might wanna consider seeing if there is a group like that where you live because I, literally ha i mean i knew what roman was doing but i didn't really realize that like i was the one benefiting from all this work of other like people and volunteering their time um so it's just really interesting so if, if that's something that you do um it might be worth checking out to see if like there's any way 
to contribute to the trail cleanup. Um, so that's just like my little public service announcement and admitting that for all the years I've been hiking, I just assumed that some magic fairy came out and cleaned up all the stuff so that I could safely hike in the woods. Um, but other than that, everything, everything's going really, I mean, it's all been wonderful. So thank you everyone again, so much for watching. Um, it, I just appreciate it so much. The friendships, I, I just can't get over. So, and I will, I will see you guys again very soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.